In today's video, we're going to be taking the Page Builder framework for a speed test. We're going to find out exactly how fast it is in a range of different circumstances. So if you're interested to find out if the Page Builder framework is the perfect theme for you, stick around, let's benchmark it, and I'll give you all those results. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been speed testing some very popular WordPress themes to see how they stack up on a speed basis when working with page builders like Elementor and Elementor Pro. In this video, we're going to be taking the fifth and final of our first batch of themes for a speed test. This time, we're checking out the page builder framework. We're going to be benchmarking it with just the theme installed on a clean copy of WordPress. Next up, we're going to install Elementor and Elementor Pro, create a header and a footer and some page content. We're going to speed check it again. And third and final test we're going to do is we're going to install Auto Optimize, which is a caching plugin, to see how that fares with the theme itself, to see if it speeds up, makes no difference, or actually has an adverse effect. Once we've done all that, I'm going to come back and give you all those results. And in a final video, we're going to take a look and compare all five themes together and see how they all stack up. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified as soon as that's ready. If it's already released, check out the notes below and it'll have a link through to that so you can check it out yourself. So I've hopped over to the dashboard of WordPress and we're going to take a look just to make sure that there's nothing installed. So first of all, let's come over to our plugins and we're going to take a look in there. And the only thing we have is the classic editor. Next up, if we jump over to the appearance section, we come into the themes. You can see we have the page builder framework set up and ready to start working. And that's the active theme. So now we've seen what we have, let's take a look at starting our benchmarking. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to Pingdom. Now Pingdom is a completely free service. I'm not paying for this. This is just a completely great way of finding out just how fast your site is. And also if there's any problems, you can help to rectify the speed up and alleviate any of those problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in the URL for the site. Next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I test in the local service to where my actual hosting company is set up. I'm based in the UK, so what I want to do is set this to be Europe, United Kingdom and London. That's going to give me the shortest round trip from where I'm actually trying to access the site to the server in my own country and then get the results back. Okay, so let's start our test and see our first result. So there's our initial results with nothing installed other than the theme. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good starting point, a very small page size, minimal requests, and a pretty good sub one second load time. Like I say, I'm going to run this two more times so I get an average to find out what the result is because there can be fluctuations for various different reasons. It's always good to get an average. So I'm going to run this two more times. Then we're going to jump over to GT Metrics and we're going to do our first test on there. So I went to GT Metrics now. And again, this is a completely free service. If you want to get more options, I'd recommend subscribing or signing up to this. It's completely free and you'll get access then the same as I do. And it saves all the different parameters you want to use. So as you can see, I've got this set up to be using the Chrome browser and again, based in the London UK. Other than that, everything else is stock. So again, we're going to come in, we're going to choose the URL to analyze. We'll hit analyze on there and we'll let it run through a test and come back with our initial starting point results, just the theme installed. And there we go. There's our first starting point. As you can see, we're getting pretty good across the board speeds. We've got a one second load time and we've got, we've got the same number of requests and a pretty much exactly the same file size, which you'd expect to see. Now, the one thing I want to make you aware of, if you look at the Y slow, why is that slower than the page score? Well, if we jump over to the Y score tab, you can see whenever you test a site that doesn't use a content delivery network or CDN, it will always get marked down for that. So you will always see a lower figure in there unless you are using a CDN. Now, not everybody understands or even wants to use a CDN. So it's why I don't use it as part of this test. And again, all CDNs are not created equal. So that's going to cause some fluctuation in the results. So just bear that in mind when you look at the Y score or the Y slow score, you're going to see that's always going to be marked down because the CDN is not being used. But again, a pretty good starting point. I'm sure when we run through, we're going to get some fluctuations in these results. And I will come back to you in a moment with the results for both the Pingdom score and for the GT metric score. So the initial round of testing, we've got Pingdom gives us a result of just over half a second with the average, which is pretty good. And if we take a look at the scores for GT metrics, that gives us 800 milliseconds, which again is under one second. So that gives us an overall average of just under 700 millisecond load time. So that's pretty good starting point. So like I say, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Elemental, Elemental Pro, and then create some basic pages with a header, footer using the theme builder, and also a template content then for the actual page itself. So I'm going to do that, come back and start testing. 
Okay, so there's our page all set up. We've used the header, a footer, uploaded a logo, set the menu in there, and everything is exactly the same as all the other tests we've done. So as you can see, everything's looking pretty good. All the images are optimized as part of the template. So that's our starting point. So what we're gonna do, jump back over to Pingdom, refresh this, and then start benchmarking with our content in place. So again, all the same things, making sure that we're set in the UK, start our test and see what our initial results gonna come back in with the Elemental Pro content and templates all set up. And there we go, there's our initial results. If we take a look, we drop the performance grade because we are, as always, using more HTTP requests, which, if you look at the tests on any of the other themes, you'll see this is the same case every single time. So this is something you have to take into consideration when using Elementor or Elementor Pro. These are the things that it's doing. It's not down to the theme itself. But as you can see, we get in a sub one second load time, which is a fantastic result for this theme with that content installed. So I'm gonna run this two more times, and then we're gonna take a look at GT metrics and I'll come back with all the results. So as before, all the settings are the same in GT metrics. Let's hit analyze and let it see it go through and come back with our initial results for GT metrics. So this is our first batch of results. As you can see, the load time through GT metrics is higher, but then traditionally, if you looked at any of the other results on any of the other previous videos, you'll see the same thing on there. There's a discrepancy between Pingdom and GT metrics with the load time. However, you can see that the y score is lower again, whereas the page speed score is still pretty good. So we jump over to the y tab. You can see, as always, we've got the CDN error, but also in the same way that we had with Pingdom, we've got make fewer HTTP requests. Now, using those requests and making lots of requests is something that things like auto-optimize or any other caching tool should be able to help you with. So hopefully we should see a vast improvement on that when we start the test with auto-optimize. And again, once we install Elementor, you can see the number of requests has gone up as well. So let's just run these tests a couple more times and let me come back with my initial scores to find out what those overall averages are across the board. So I've done all the tests now and we've got the mean average. If we take a look at Pingdom, it gets just over a one second load time. And if we take a look at GT metrics, we get about 1.8 seconds as the average, which overall gives us just over 1.4 seconds as an average load time with all those tests, which isn't particularly bad. However, let's take a look now where we install auto-optimize, use the basic settings in there, nothing through the advanced setup, and let's see what difference that makes. So I've hopped over to the dashboard, we've installed auto-optimize, I'm just gonna show you exactly what settings I'm gonna configure. Now I'm just basing this upon someone that might not know exactly how to go through the advanced settings, and they're just going to use the basics. So we're gonna optimize JavaScript, CSS, and HTML options. We're gonna leave a CDN because we're not currently using one. We'll save those changes. We'll hop over to the images tab. In there, because we're not gonna use short pixel to optimize the images, they've already been optimized. So we're just gonna use the lazy loading option. And again, we're gonna save those changes. And finally, we're gonna to hop to the extras tab and we're simply gonna come in, remove the emojis and remove the query strings. We're gonna leave everything else as is. Save the changes on there and then we're now ready to go through and rerun those tests with auto-optimize installed. Now back onto Pingdom, we're ready to start running our first test with auto-optimize to see exactly what results we'll have. And there's our initial results. We can see we get an improvement in the performance grade. Our load time has increased on this first attempt slightly. But what we can see is the number of requests has gone down dramatically. So we can see that those number of requests is being helped considerably by the auto-optimized plugin. Like I say, I'm gonna run this two more times, get a mean average, then jump over to GT metrics. So I've hopped over to GT metrics and we're gonna analyze this for the first time to get our benchmark average or benchmark starting point. And there we go, there's our starting point. You can see our y slow score has improved, but our load time has increased on this first run, but our number of requests has also dropped. So there's our starting point. We're now gonna run this two more times and take a look at the results of the averages. So a final set of results with auto-optimize installed comes out with Pingdom coming in at just 0.1.1 second for the load time as it average across the three tests. And taking a look at GT metrics, we get a higher result of 2.6 seconds, which gives us an overall average of just under 1.9 second load time. So in this example, we find that auto-optimize, while it cuts back the number of requests, it doesn't necessarily improve the page load time. Now this is something we also saw when we tested this with GeneratePress. So it's always worth bearing in mind to test any optimization plugin before you commit to it. So there we go, that's the page builder framework tested and benchmarked. How did you think it fared? Did it surprise you, shock you, or was it kind of on par with what you expected to see from this theme? Let me know in the comment section below. 
If you'd like to see how the page builder framework fares against the other four themes we've tested, be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when the next video is released, and that's going to go through and show you all the results and compare them. So you can find out which is the best option for you, which is the fastest option for you when working with WordPress and Elementor Pro. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it a thumbs down, that's perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section below what you did or didn't like about this video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Now, speaking of content, don't forget to check out these other cool videos on the channel right now. Take a look at those and continue your WordPress education and learning new skills. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.